Hi, I'm Deke. Welcome to DeekePod, my series of once every other weekly videos on computer graphics and digital imaging. This is my way of connecting with you, and I do mean you, without some third party intermediary getting between us and saying, no, no, you can't be watching Unfiltered Deke. Unfiltered Deke is bad for your lungs. I'm not bad for your lungs, I'm bad for your liver. Get it straight, jerks. This week's episode, it's Halloween. Plus, Adobe's vast new Creative Suite 4 just came out. So what better way to celebrate both occasions than with the scariest new feature in Photoshop CS4, the Masks Palette. One little palette, five little options. It's an itsy, bitsy, creepy, scary, psychotic little thing like, what was that movie? Chucky. The mask palette is like Chucky. It's kind of cute, but it has a big old knife. All the better to slice up your images. And if you're not careful, you. What the hell's a mask? First, masking. In Photoshop, it's not this or this, it's this. It's a way of making a super accurate selection. Lots of ways to make a mask. You can make a selection and refine it in the quick mask mode. You can use the color range command. You can duplicate a channel and modify it. So you'd think the new mask palette would contribute to those experiences, right? Yeah, but no. So very Chucky. So let's pretend you know a thing or two about masking, because otherwise, we'll never get anywhere. The mask palette, right out of the gate, it takes a big giant poop on the masking skills that we're pretending you have. You working in the quick mask mode? The mask palette says, no mask selected. Um, memo to interface designer, a mask is a selection? No mask selected? That's like a bank saying no currency cashed. What does it even mean? Let's switch to an alpha channel. This is mask central, where it all happens. The mask palette, again with no mask selected. See? That's Chucky. That's exactly what Chucky would do. Damn, I swear I want to take a hammer to that stupid doll's face. All it needs is layer. All right, I've never actually seen a Chucky movie. I was tempted to when Jennifer Tilly was in one, but didn't. So I have no idea if Chucky ultimately repented and became a good psychotic puppet doll thing. But the mask panel does ultimately repent. In fact, it instantly transforms from devil doll to responsible image editing citizen the moment you give it a layer. That's all it needs, an independent, self-sufficient layer. Don't we all? Ah, oh, mask palette. Looks like I don't have to smash in your stupid doll face after all. So here's how it works. Start with this. Busy composition, lots of layers. I add this one, of me, shot against a green screen. That's a tip, right? Want to mask people? Get a green screen. So I'm on a layer. That makes the mask palette happy. Click here. Now we have a layer mask. Now click this. Good old color range. God, I love this command. Weird at first, but once you know, so simple. I can't tell what I'm doing until I change this to this. And then click this option. Really, it helps. Then click here just once. Raise the fuzziness, bang, made myself a hole. Ah, that's Chucky, still messing with us. Naughty, naughty, bad little mass murdering leprechaun doll. But click this, all better. We got a mask. It's time to refine. So all in all, pretty good mask, but could be better. Zoom in, see those green edges? We gotta mitigate those, and here's how. Click this button, brings up this dialog box. Lots going on, but here are the best settings. Keep this value, zero out these, then this one way down. There we go. Bringing it all together. A good mask is never enough to make a good composition. So here's how we make me fit into this place I never was. First, add an adjustment layer, no settings. Clip it, set it to hard light. Okay, this lends me a certain amount of zing. I'll switch to one of these bird layers. This is a vector-based shape. I made it with a custom shape tool, and yet I can blur the edges like so. This is a first for Photoshop, by the way, and it's dynamic, meaning change the blur whenever you like. The Blackbird too. good old Raven, nevermore. Conclusion. This whole Chucky thing really has me thinking about the Tilly sisters. Jennifer, Meg, I know we haven't seen much of them lately, especially Meg, I miss them. They're similar but different. How will I ever choose? Meanwhile, I tossed in a text layer. I'm talking about the apple. It represents one of the four essential food groups. Fruits, olives, martinis, and whomever Chucky is interested in killing today. So goodbye. And in the meantime, don't forget about my pro Tilly print publications at deekdonoreilly.com or my full-length motion pictures at lynda.com slash deek. But really, it's all Chucky all the time at deek.com. Just dolls killing dolls 24-7. Until next time, stay tuned for more videos. I have so many more information-rich meat cleavers to cleave your eager meats here at DeekPod.